Welcome you all to Vijay Diagnostic Webinar Series. Good evening, everyone. Today, we'll be speaking about the role of 3D ultrasound in the evaluation of uterine anomalies. I'm Dr. K.L. Srujana, consultant radiologist at Vizag Vijay Diagnostic Center. Our guest speaker is Dr. Apurva. She is a consultant radiologist at Himayat Nagar branch. Her area of specialization is 3D ultrasound imaging. She has in fact done a lot of work in 3D ultrasounds. As we all know, patients with uterine anomalies present with various gynecological and obstructive symptoms, including hematocolpus, hematometra, recurrent miscarriages, and infertility. Imaging plays a crucial role in these cases. Recent advances in ultrasound and MRI have helped greatly in accurate diagnosis of these uterine anomalies. So uh, we'll be now going on to the topic. Uh, over to you, Dr. Apurva. Hi, ma'am. My topic is 3D sonographic evaluation of congenital uterine anomalies. Detection of uterine abnormalities is very essential and has been focus of recent research and have important role in sub-infertility, implantation failure, and pregnancy outcome. Proper depiction of structural defects is important in treatment plan of various gynecological conditions. The main aim is to understand uterine abnormalities using 3D to maximum benefit and add it as a routine tool whenever encounter uterine pathologies. MR imaging, the imaging standard of reference. HSC is routinely used in evaluation of infertility because a key component of malaria duct anomalies characterization is external uterine fundal contour. HSC is limited for this purpose. Patients suspected of having malaria duct anomalies are often initially referred for pelvic ultrasound. A routine 2D previous ultrasound is reliable diagnostic test but it may not highlight many necessary details to arrive at correct diagnosis. MR imaging is standard reference and has multiplanar capability, allows excellent soft tissue characterization and permits a greater field of interrogation and gives excellent intrauterine and outer contour anatomic detailing. In most uterine malformations, especially the less extreme forms, only two uterine endometrial cavities are seen with 2D vaginal ultrasound. 3D is very evident in showing relationship between uterine cavity and fundus, allowing an accurate diagnosis. Transvaginal 3D ultrasound shows great sensitivity and specificity in Mullerian anomalies and also in study of uterine contour. Its great advances are frontal view of uterus impossible to achieve with 2D vaginal ultrasound and essential for diagnosis of malformations. Orthogonal planes allow to see the same image in three spatial planes. The coronal plane is very important plane in diagnosis of these malformations. It allows semi-automatic volumetric calculation while providing spectacular images. The Mullerian anomaly classification is a seven-class system that can be used to describe a number of embryonic Mullerian depth anomalies. There are seven classes. Class one is uterine agencies. Failure of in early development of bilateral Mullerian duct causes complete agencies or hypoplasia. Uterus, cervix, and proximal two-third of vagina is not formed. It is again divided into vaginal, cervical, fundal, tubal, and combined. Class 2 is unicornate uterus. It ranges almost around 15%. Failure of development or hypoplasia of unilateral Mullerian duct. Normal malaria duct is deviated from the midline. If a rudimentary horn persists, it can be cavitatory or non-cavitatory type, which can further be communicating and non-communicating type. Most patients of these remain asymptomatic. These are divided again into communicating with contralateral rudimentary horn containing endometrium, non-communicating with contralateral rudimentary horn containing endometrium. Contralateral has no endometrial cavity, and no horn. Class 3 is uterus didelphis. It ranges almost around 7.5%. Results from complete failure of ductal fusion. 
Duplicated proximal vagina can be seen with a septum. Fundal cleft of more than 1 cm is diagnostic. Class 4 is bicornuate uterus. It is the second most common type, ranging almost 25%. It is partial failure of fusion. Cervix duplication may or may not be present. It is again divided into complete division, that is all the way down to external loss and partial division not extending to external loss and internal loss. This is a case showing uterine diadolphys where you can see two divergent separate uterine bodies with two separate endometrial cavities and two separate cervix. This is suggestive of uterine diadolphys. Class 5 is septate uterus. Most common anomaly ranging almost around 45%. The most common mullerian induct anomaly. It is failure of resorption of septa. Outer contour either has a cleft of less than 1 cm or is normal in appearance. It is again divided into two types that is complete division all the way down to the internal or external loss and incomplete division involving the endometrial cavity but not the cervix. Class 6 is arcuate uterus ranging around 7%. It is considered as a normal variant. Mild indentation of endometrium by the fundus of uterus. And class 7 is in utero dietary stilbestrol exposure, that is T shaped uterus. These are the images of acute uterus where there is normal external uterine contour with a broad, smooth indentation on fundal segment of endometrium. No division of horns can be seen. This is another case showing a subceptate uterus. Endometrium in upper body or fundus is seen to diverge into two cavities. No external fundal indentation seen in this case. This is the image showing complete septate uterus. That is two endometrial cavities are seen with septum separating the two endometrial cavities and cervix to the entire length. And there is a non-communicating left horn showing hematometra and these are the corresponding MRI images showing the same that is two uterine cavities and two cervical cavities and a hematometra. The latest classification is the SJ classification. As such, it is not that frequently or routinely used in these days now, but for the sake of simplicity, an extreme detailed subclassification is avoided in this classification. The, it is classified based on anatomical variations of uterine, cervical, and vaginal anomalies, which are grouped into subclasses, having the criteria that of clinical significance of abnormality. It is divided into six classes. Class 0 incorporates all the cases with normal uterus. Class U1 or dysmorphic uterus incorporates all cases with normal uterine outline but with an abnormal shape of uterine cavity excluding septa. It is again further divided into three categories that is class U1A or T-shaped uterus, class U1B or uterus infantilis, class U1C or others, class U2 or septate uterus. It incorporates all the cases with normal fusion and abnormal absorption of midline septum. Septum is defined as the uterus with normal outline and an internal indentation at the fundal midline exceeding 50% of uterine wall thickness. This indentation is characterized as septum and it could divide partly or completely the uterine cavity including in some cases cervix and or leg. It is again divided into class U2A or partial septate uterus characterized by existence of a septum dividing partly the uterine cavity above the level of internal cervical loss. U2B or complete septate uterus characterized by existence of a septum fully dividing the uterine cavity to the level of a cervical internal loss. These are the images showing the septate uterus where we can see two endometrial cavities up to lower one third of uterine cavity. 
This is another case showing the septate uterus where we can see two endometrial cavities with septum extending to the lower third of uterine cavity. Class U3 or bicorporeal uterus incorporates all cases of fusion defects. As bicorporeal is defined, the uterus is an abnormal fundal outline. It is characterized by presence of an external indentation at the fundal midline, exceeding 50% of uterine wall thickness. It is again further divided into class U3A or partial bicorporeal uterus, characterized by external fundal indentation, partly dividing the uterine corpus above the level of cervix. Class U3P or complete bicorporeal uterus characterized by external fundal indentation, completely dividing the uterine corpus up to the level of cervix. And U3C or bicorporeal septate uterus characterized by presence of absorption defect in addition to main fusion defect. In patients with corporeal septate uterus, the width of midline fundal indentation exceeds by 150% the uterine wall thickness. Class U4 or hemi uterus incorporates all cases of unilateral formed uterus. Hemi uterus is defined as the unilateral uterine development. The contralateral part can either incompletely formed or absent. It is again further divided into class U4A or hemi uterus with rudimentary cavity or class U4B or hemi uterus without rudimentary cavity. Class U5 or aplastic uterus incorporates all cases of uterine aplasia. Class U5A or aplastic uterus with rudimentary cavity characterized by presence of bile or unilateral functional horn. Class U5B or aplastic uterus without rudimentary cavity characterized either by presence of uterine remnants or by full uterine aplasia. And class U6 is kept for still unclassified cases. And for cervical anomalies, it is subclass C0 or normal cervix, subclass C1 or septate cervix, subclass C2 or double cervix, subclass C3 or unilateral cervical aplasia, subclass C4 or cervical aplasia incorporating all cases of complete cervical aplasia. Vaginal anomalies. Vaginal anomalies, the subclass V0 or normal vagina, which in incorporates all cases of normal vaginal development. Subclass V1 or longitudinal non obstructing vaginal septum. Subclass V2 or longitudinal obstructing vaginal septum. Subclass V3 or transverse vaginal septum and or imperforate hymen. Subclass V4 or vaginal aplasia incorporates all cases of complete or partial vaginal aplasia. This is the table showing all the three anomalies that is uterine anomaly, vaginal and cervical anomalies. Thank you. So finally, what are the advantages of 3D ultrasound? Ma'am, 3D ultrasound is better than 2D ultrasound as it shows three planes. The most important third plane, coronal plane, is essential in diagnosis in showing the relationship between the uterine cavity and fundal contour. Okay. Which helps in diagnosis of these Mullerian duct anomalies, ma'am. Okay. Uh it is uh, being done in the same sitting as 2D ultrasound. So it will be saving more time for the patient. Ma'am, it's more time. It is cost effective. And uh, it is also useful in uh, few conditions like few surgeries can be uh, avoided like the diagnostic hysteroscopy where there are chances of perforation if it is not correctly diagnosed. Hmm. Especially in... Uh, like uh, in differentiating the septate mm -hmm. from a mm. mm. And it's almost equal to MRI. Almost equal to MRI in many cases. It's only for the uterine anomalies. In uterine anomalies, maybe. Mm. Uh, where else are mm. you using this 3D ultrasound? Ma'am, 3D ultrasound can be used in many cases, ma'am, other than uterine anomalies diagnosis. It can be also used for fibroid mapping. 
in determining the position of IUCD, for calculating stromal volume in cases of uh, polycystic morphology of ovaries. Have you been uh, recently doing these cases? If you have, please show us. Yes, ma'am. I have been doing few cases. I will be sharing you these cases. Mm. Uh, these are few of my cases, ma'am, showing the uh, uh, fibroid mapping of submucosal fibroids and uh, fibroid indentation uh, within the endometrium. Okay. And uh, these are myometrial fibroids indenting the endometrium. And uh, these are the IUCD tracings, ma'am. Okay. It will be very helpful in uh, pro uh, assessing the placement of IUCD, especially in patients presenting with abdominal cramps and all, if the uh, if the parts of the T are uh, invading the myometrium and all, uh, this 3D ultrasound will give a better picture, I think. Yes, ma'am. Exact location will be seen. See. And also, in calculating of uh, stromal volumes in case of polycystic ovaries, Three-dimensional stromal volumes can be uh, calculated. Okay. And of course, in uh, pregnancies, ma'am, 3D pregnancies, as you can see, all the uh, parts can be clearly visualized. The face, eyes, nose, lips, fingers, the total of upper limb, the foot, any abnormalities like club roots can be identified. Even the hand, ear lobes, the whole of the back, the spine, any spinal abnormalities can also be identified. Mm. And in case of uh, NTs, the, the major parts can be seen. Any abnormalities like uh, cleft lip can be identified in 3D with 100% uh, accuracy compared to 2D. And in few conditions uh, like uh, meningeal herniations, brain herniations, in, in this is a 16 year 16 week baby where I, we can find only the upper limb only single upper limb these conditions can be uh, clearly determined with 100% accuracy in 3d map okay so finally to conclude uh, what are the limitations of 3d ultrasound ma'am 3d uh, ultrasound is limited to the field of view of probe map hmm. Only till the field of view of probe is in seen, the 3D it can be visualized with accuracy. In uh, few conditions like uh, didelphis or any diverging uh, uterine bodies, the total field of view, the complete uterine contour, the outer contour can't be visualized in those cases. In uh, fibroid mappings, if any uh, big fibroids are there which are extending to abdomen, then those fibroids can't be clearly visualized because of the lack of field of view in 3D. Hmm. And in cases like pregnancies, uh, as a 3D probe is a static probe, all the uh, things matters like maternal body habitus, the position of fetus, number of weeks of fetus, the position of fetus, the adequate lighter, the positioning of vessels, everything in, uh, should be in position to get a proper good image of 3D. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Apurva. Uh, Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Okay. We'll wind up. Then. Thank you, ma'am.